interesting story that has emerged this morning. Suella Braverman has announced plans to restrict the use of tents by homeless people. As she claimed, sleep, sleeping rough was, quote, a lifestyle choice for many. My question to you this hour, is the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, right when she says sleeping rough on Britain's streets is a lifestyle choice for many? 0345 6060973 or you can text 84850. The Home Secretary said that we, quote, cannot allow our streets to be taken over by rows of tents occupied by people. She also vowed to crack down on, quote, squalor and, quote, aggressive begging. Ms Braverman said the rise in homeless people on the UK streets was largely driven by people coming from, quote, abroad, living on the streets, who were making a lifestyle choice. She's understood to be drawing up plans to introduce a new civil offence to deter charities from giving tents to rough sleepers. This reported in the Financial Times. It means charities could be fined for distributing tents for homeless people if they go on to cause a public nuisance. I'd be very interested to understand how the phrase public nuisance will be determined in this case. Miss Bravman said in a statement on X, formerly Twitter, quote, Unless we step in now to stop this, British cities will go the way of places like the US and San Francisco and Los Angeles, where weak policies have led to an explosion of crime, drug taking and squalor. The Home Secretary insisted there were, quote, options for people who don't want to be sleeping rough in Britain. I want you to remember that sentence and th as this uh, conversation continues. Oh, my goodness. Where to begin? Shall we start with some facts? That's a good place to start, isn't it? Especially when dealing with the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman. Government data estimates that 2,893 people were sleeping rough on a single night in England in June 2023. That count rose from when it was last measured, which was the March. So it went up between March and June by 500 people in just two months. That's not me saying that. That's official government data, which the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, will have at her fingertips. Meanwhile... The Office for National Statistics found men who are living on the street outnumber women at a ratio of six to one. Suella Braverman says that there are, quote, plenty of options for people who don't want to sleep rough in Britain. Just to remind you, the intervention made by central government during the pandemic in which people who are living on the streets were given rooms and hotels and accommodated a system which has proven very successful at ending homelessness altogether in other European countries that was brought to an end after the pandemic because the government said it couldn't afford it. St Mungo's, a homelessness charity, has condemned Suella Braverman's comments saying that she has misrepresented the sector that provides homes for people that are homeless and that there simply are not enough places for them. So my question to you, Suella Braverman says that it is a choice of lifestyle to live on the streets of Britain and she wants to bring in a law that will restrict charities from handing out tents to homeless people in winter whole new law. The Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, has said that people who sleep rough are making a lifestyle choice. She claims the majority of them in England are foreign-born, foreign non-UK citizens. She says that there are 
plenty of places that they can go instead of the streets. She's therefore introducing a new law that she says will restrict charities from giving Ross sleepers tents as winter approaches. What I can tell you is this. Government statistics show that the majority of Ross sleepers in England are UK citizens, men over the age of 26. Charities are saying there are not enough hostel places and many people find hostels, scary places, at night. They don't feel safe because people who are homeless often have very complex needs, including mental health and drug addiction, uh, drug addiction issues. What Suella Braverman is doing is demonising vulnerable people. Homelessness, including rough sleeping in this country, has increased as a result of the cost of living crisis. People have been losing their homes. They cannot, cannot afford rent. These are structural, endemic issues in our country. And who has been in charge? This government for 13 years. And I think it is unforgivable, unforgivable to demonise a minority of vulnerable people in this country. And she should not. She should not. As a secretary, as the Home Secretary, be doing that. It is a misuse of her position. And I would urge all of you not to take a cue from her. Use your own eyes, your own ears, your own ability to read and analyse what is happening in this country. Don't turn on a vulnerable minority who don't even have an address or a place to live or somewhere not to freeze at night as winter approaches. Don't do that. I, I implore you. I mean, everything you just said was my life. Um, with the mental health, with the PTSD, with the panic attack, I just could not go to a hostel. And um, my problem wasn't drug addiction. I, I had a corporate job. I'm, I, I was a video editor. I went to uni. I studied my degree. I got my master's. I worked for a year, you know, to get experience. I finally got my corporate job, you know, 35k a year. It, it, it was it was the best life I, I, I had. And I, if I say to you, with, with incrementally small things, all of that got taken away um, and, and, and there was no support, no support whatsoever. Um, I, I had an accident um, which caused me to be bedridden for three months. Um, and my back uh, will never be the same again. I now have a disc, um, which meant that I couldn't do the hours. Uh, it, obviously, if, like, you know, in the media industry, it, it's all hours of the day, you know, maybe six to seven yeah. days a week. It, I, it was just not possible. Um, and I slowly, slowly had to reduce hours. I ended up, I mean, they didn't want to fire me, but it just went to a state where I could not be at work and, and working from home doesn't work in the media industry. So they had to let me go. And, and, and very slowly, I lost my car. I lost my house. I, I, I mean, I slowly lost everything because I had to I had to just pay for things or, or things were on direct debits that it just wasn't going through. And the problem was that I was I was raised in North London. But I was working in South London and, and the first property I actually rented for myself was in South London. So when I did go to the council for support, they said that because I hadn't lived there for more than five years, they couldn't support me. So when I went back to North <laughs> Council, they said the same thing. They said, you've moved out of the area and we can no longer support you. So it came down to charities. And as amazing as, as all of the charities were, um, I have PTSD, I have panic attacks. And, and it's, it, it was just not possible to live there. Sarah, as a woman, how would you have felt going into a homeless shelter, which we know are mixed, mixed sex? I mean, honestly, it, it's, it's even beyond it being mixed. You just, you've lost everything. And, and the only thing you need is, 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 
not even love or, or just just a, just just to know that you're not going to be out in the street. I mean, I couldn't even tell my friends because I was at a 35k job and I had suddenly lost. I read. I, I didn't want to be the homeless one, you know. Um, it, it, uh, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. It it just got no. me because you're 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 Robin very and, articulate she's, and very. She's just, I mean, she. I, I, I'm not sure if she, I don't know her background. I'm not sure if she comes from privilege or if she comes from an immigrant background. But I mean, I was my parents were political immigrants, and I came when I was very young. So I understand the pain, and I understand how hard I had to work to, to get myself up in society. And I saw in a matter of moments how I lost it all, not being my fault at all, and it. It just, I mean, all, I, I, like, I, I cannot believe the words she's using because I can understand if some people, you know, go through the drug route. That, that's a whole different situation. Mm. But even then, they need support and help because I've had, I've had a partner who has addiction and, and, and it, it's really difficult. But it's just, it's, again, it's that dehumanizing because I, I, I basically wanted to tell my story. So I put a face to everything you just said because everything you said was is reality and to be honest to this day I still don't have a house I, I live with friends because it, in the end I got to a point where my, my um, anxiety and, and mental health got so bad that I ended up going to my closest friends and, and saying everything and, and they were just gobsmacked that I couldn't obviously come to them with this because I had built everything on my own and I didn't want anything from anybody else I'm so, um, so yeah I'm still couch to couch you know because there is no support and, and the minor support that there is you basically feel like you would rather die <laughs> than go to these um, I, I don't know how else to explain it I can explain it Sarah um, and thank you for picking up the phone. Um, and I know you're very brave because you're a first time caller from, and, and that's that's tough. Um, and what you're describing is humiliation, because when you lose everything, and in your case, because you were injured and you couldn't work, if you're somebody who has who has pride in your achievements, if you're someone who um, doesn't want to be dependent on others, if you're somebody who um, wants to be able to save face it feels humiliating to lose yeah. everything and that and that is a very difficult thing to cope with on top of every everything else that you've just described so i understand where you're coming from and thank you for calling and thank you for telling your story but i i, I hope you're with someone this afternoon uh, ian in working in surrey hello hello hi hi i'm um, saying uh, you you, mm. you did lose your your home yes i had a really bad breakup with my wife at the time uh, lost my house the local council um, the local council wouldn't um, house me because I owned a house even though I couldn't live in that house um, it was really traumatic at the time twice I ended up in hospital um, only because I did something really like, basically went to in my life uh, Man, ended sorry. up living living in a van. Um, uh, after living in while I was living in the van, I got cancer. The local hospital uh, refused to give me any treatment because I was living in a van because uh, I had nowhere to live. Um, so I had to lie to them to say that I had somewhere to live um, because this was the winter. I then got ill from um, having the treatment. Um, so that was seven, eight years ago. Um, yeah, so when she says it's traumatic, it is. Uh, I don't know. There's, I don't know if there's any short-term or long-term um, help people can get. Um, I didn't want to go into one of these um, hostels. I didn't ask. Um, because I've never taken drugs and I don't really drink or anything, and I didn't want to be around other people that were like that. Um, and that's how I see those places as being. Um, so, yeah, they're um, not giving people tents when they need one, I think is one of the worst things that you could dream of thinking of doing. I think people that are in that sort of situation, the same situation that I was in, 
they're at such a low part of their life. Um, why, why make it worse for them? Ian, how are you doing now? What happened with the cancer yeah. treatment? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. Um, I'm fine now. Um, I'm intelligent. I'm pretty intelligent. You know, I'm pretty, um, pretty well founded, um, thought wise. Um, things still affect me from back then, from what I went through, the the homelessness and everything. Mm. Um, I have a really nice girlfriend that, uh, well, yeah, she's good. Um, so yes, things are good now. Um, but uh, why why would you want to make things worse for people when they're that so so low in their life? Do you know, Ian? If I could get Suella Braverman on the program, I would ask her that very question. Ian, in working. Mm. I'm sorry. Thank you very much.